Hey there, folks. Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast here again with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions. Today, I want to discuss one of the recent SCOTUS opinions. A few days back, I believe they rendered... I know there was at least two. I think there might have been another one. Um, I honestly try to not pay too much attention to these things. Um, Not because they won't affect me, um, but because it's just nine people in silly black dresses giving their opinions, and millions of people take this as some kind of gospel. Um, not uh, Not really for me, because the bureaucrats, politicians, and the rest of the agents of government are going to do as they wish. So instead of getting all worked up about it and uh, wringing my hands, uh, I just let them go ahead and do what they're going to do, and I continue to live my life as freely as uh, currently is humanly possible. So the major opinion uh, that's got everybody talking, it seems, is SCOTUS's ruling on the gay marriage issue. Um, this, of course, is completely ridiculous because government has no business in the marriage game whatsoever. Um, so the fact that this even needs to be discussed is a testament to how the overwhelming majority cannot really think for themselves and has to wait for the almighty state to weigh in on as to how things should be done. Now, the other opinion uh, that I am aware of had to do with the ACA um, and, you know, basically one part of government ruling that the other part of government has done nothing wrong and that it's still perfectly fine to quote-unquote tax people for some kind of inaction. Um, That's basically what any ruling in favor of the ACA comes down to, regardless of what the actual topic is. I think this one had to do with, uh, you know, altering language again, um, because the original agreed upon rules of the ACA were that nobody or any any state who does not participate in the federal um, expansions of Medicaid and Medicare and what have you um, and does not set up their or, or sets up their own exchange I think or it might have been the other way around again honestly I don't care um, but uh, only certain states were allowed to get federal money for this. Um, but now, of course, SCOTUS has ruled that, oh, no, 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 that's not what was meant at all. Uh, it was meant that everybody can get the money. So, just another part of the boondoggle. <clears throat> but the one opinion, and again, I keep saying opinion because I want to put this into people's heads. Uh, obviously, voluntarists, anarchists, libertarians, and even some conservatives understand that this is an opinion that is passed down and not some kind of ruling. Uh, but far too many people cheer or jeer when the uh, funny folks in black dresses give their opinions because most people seem to consider this some kind of ruling and the SCOTUS has decided. No, they gave an opinion. And, you know, what's that old adage? Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. Well, that's how I look at their opinions. But that notwithstanding, um, a lot of people are, have been discussing the opinion that was passed down. And a lot of uh, cheering from the left and also other people that believe they are 
standing up for gay rights and a lot of bitching and moaning from the Christian right who believes that the sanctity of marriage is being defiled in, in some sense. Um, and then there's the, also the faction that is upset because states' rights are being overruled. Now, if you're going to take a constitutional path and you actually believe that that document is legitimate, then you actually have an argument there. Um, according to the way things were supposedly set up, the federal government is not supposed to be able to overrule the states when it comes to these things. But that, again, is if you're just willing to play the game and believe the nonsense that was force-fed to most of us throughout our lives. On the issue of, quote-unquote, gay marriage itself, uh, this entire thing is a farce. Now, I have gay friends, gay family members, and I would like them to be able to live their lives without being harassed, uh, being able to spend their lives with whoever they choose to. But this opinion, see ruling for the ignorant masses, um, doesn't really give them the freedom that a lot of people erroneously believe it does. The fact of the matter is that marriage, um, although considered to be a religious construct, actually supersedes not only the state, but uh, I think it supersedes religion itself. It is essentially a contract. You are contracting with another human being, regardless of sexual orientation um, or whatever else you could think of, you are contracting with another and agreeing to spend the rest of your life together, or at least until you get sick of one another. And that's it. It's a contract. Very simple. One person, second person, agree, they're off and running. When it comes to marriage licensing, though, you are now involving a third party into this contract. And most people don't recognize this, number one, because they don't actually understand contracts, uh, because many of this same group of people also considers the social contract to be legitimate, um, even though it's not a contract in any sense of the word. Um, but most people don't see this third party situation because they are under the impression that you have to get a marriage license in order to be legally married, which, well, that part is true. In order to be legally married, you must obtain one of these licenses. But most people, because of the way they were raised, because of what they were taught, believe that it is necessary to have one of these government-approved pieces of paper in order to be married. And that is simply not the case. You can very easily have what is, I believe, referred to as a covenant wedding, where you and the other individual that you wish to marry get together. You can write out your own little contract if you wish. You can have it presided over by pretty much anybody and uh, say whatever you want to say, and poof, you're married. You are committed to each other for however long you both choose to remain that way. Now, doing things in this manner does not afford you the legal protections of a state-sanctioned marriage, but that really shouldn't matter to folks because Pretty much everything that is state-sanctioned is complete and utter crap because, well, legality, 
does not equal morality or justice. So all these people that are cheering that, oh yes, now, now my gay friends and family can get married legally and, and they can have all these, get all the benefits that, that the rest of us have, have, have been allowed. Just think about what you're saying when you say something like that out loud or even think it. This was not the gay community being given a right to get married, which I've already outlined. They already had that right. This was a group of individuals being given permission to now ask permission to get married. That's not freedom. That's being granted a privilege by your masters to do something that you already had every legitimate right to do in the first place. Yet people are cheering this. Even a lot of libertarians and anarchists I know are cheering this because well, this is the system we work under now, and so we have to deal with it, and, and this is still a big step forward. How? You are, all you're doing is expanding government because now there is another class of people that the government has an extra version of control over because it's still a permission game. You're still getting permission to do something that, again, you had every right to do in the first place because doing so, even without government permission, was not aggressing upon anyone. Um, the only people negatively affected by uh, a gay or lesbian couple getting married um, the only, the only, actually it's not even people, it's the thing getting affected by this is the feels of the more religious folks who believe that their institution is being demeaned in some way. Well, as I've discussed on this show and on the seat, we've all discussed on the seas before, property rights trump your feelings. Your feelings are only important to you. Property rights can be universalized, so they kind of take precedent here. And being someone who owns myself and also affording that courtesy to others, well, that means those individuals own themselves as well. So this is a property rights issue. I am, or anyone, is wanting to do what they wish with their property, being themselves, and not aggressing upon anyone, well, there you go. Nothing wrong with that. Perfectly legitimate, perfectly moral, perfectly just. So, asking permission to now ask permission again and possibly be denied um, isn't freedom. It's just being controlled in a different direction. Now to go along with this, there was also the Facebook picture filter that's been floating around and all these people, as soon as the opinion was passed down, started putting the rainbow filter over their picture to show solidarity. Um, and that is people's choice to do that, you know? Your Facebook profile, your picture, you want to do it, go right ahead. A couple of problems with it, though. Number one, stories have already started to circulate that this might have been another Facebook experiment basically to see how quickly people can be <laughs> duped into following the crowd. 
even if that's not true, um, there is a faction of the gay community, the more radicalized version, I guess you would say. There's, you know, there's that type in every group. Um, the more militant ones, um, which I obviously am saying that because I don't believe any or even most of the gay community is like this. But, you know, it's always the uh, squeaky wheel that gets the grease. It's always the loudest talkers that become prevalent, which is why it's so easy to demonize groups because you can point to the really loud, crazy ones and say, look, they're all like this. And the lemmings will eat that up and go, yes, they're all horrible, so we're going to ignore them. Um, so that kind of plays into people's confirmation biases. But in this situation, the more militant members of the gay community started attacking people who were not putting this picture up or who had something to say about not putting this filter up. Not even saying anything homophobic, as they like the word they like to throw around, or anti-gay or anything. People just stating that they were not putting this filter up because they didn't see this as a victory. They saw it for what it was, a control move by the state. Another way of gaining more control while appearing to give a right to a certain group, which is impossible because whatever rights you have are inherent in you due to the fact that you own yourself and a right cannot be given or taken away by anyone or any entity. It can be violated, which the state does on a regular basis to the most basic human rights, um, including property rights, which it violates on a daily basis by extorting people under the guise of taxation. But they cannot take them away and they cannot be given. So the people that were trying to point this out, many libertarians and and voluntarists and anarchists who don't support gay rights, they just support the right of every individual to live their life freely. So it's not specified as to gay rights, black rights, anybody's in particular's rights. We're all individuals. We're all human beings. We all populate this earth. So there's no reason to get specific about this. Specifying that you stand for or against gay rights or um, women's rights or black rights or whatever it is, is playing right into the divide and conquer tactics of the ruling class that have been used for hundreds, if not thousands of years. That is how they keep people at each other's throats. Always creating different classes of individuals, convincing people that they were oppressed by an entire group instead of being oppressed by the individuals who were doing the oppressing. Because when you can generalize these terms, you can convince the weak-minded to go along with whatever you want them to go along with just by using some key terms, tugging at their heartstrings, eschewing logic altogether, and getting the masses to fight amongst themselves while the ruling class continues to do what it does. So this was never about right to marry for gays, although a lot of people believe it was, this was simply about gaining control over a group of individuals under the pretense 
of giving them a right. Because, as I've already established, you cannot give or take away people's rights. You can only violate them, which is what the state does. And these people that are cheering that they are now on equal footing don't really understand what it is they've been quote-unquote given. Because anyone who now rushes off to get a marriage license to say, yay, now we can finally legally be married, you are now entering a three-way contract with the state. And as with entering any contract with the state, um, this is any type of licensing, registration, um, certification, whatever, whatever the form of it is, if it's via the state, you are entering a contract with them, which means they have even more power over you because the state can take away these things at any time it wishes. A lot of people who believe that they are part of the government think this is impossible, but it happens all the time. And it will continue to happen as long as people keep insisting on doing things the legal way as opposed to doing what is moral and just. So, my recommendation to my brothers and sisters in the gay community would be to ignore the opinions of nine twits in black dresses and live your life as you see fit. You're not hurting anybody by getting married to the one you love. You are not losing out on anything by not accepting the quote-unquote benefits that come along with a legal marriage. There may be things that you quote-unquote are not allowed to do if you don't obtain this magical piece of paper. You know, I, I know the one of the most common ones I see uh, in defense of, you know, gay marriage being being necessary for people to be equal is uh, the situation if uh, one of you know if your partner or you is are, are in a in the hospital and and you can't you can't get the right to see them and, and stuff like that. Find a better hospital, <laughs> honestly. Because as long as people keep playing this game, as long as people keep insisting that, well, we have to do it the legal way so we can get what we want, the state's just going to keep growing. It's just going to keep eroding and violating your natural rights and pretending to give you more through some licensing structure, which all that really amounts to is that they're giving you some privilege that they can take away when they deem necessary. Or just when they deem they want to. <laughs> you know, I myself am not legally married. Uh, although I still refer to my other half as my wife. We've been together for five years. We have two children. Um, I haven't even got one of the covenant weddings yet. Although, I do plan on doing that sometime in the near future. Um, really, just to make my wife happy, because to me it doesn't matter. I've committed to her. Um, I've said that I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Um, and uh, I want to keep my family together. That's all I really need. You know, she's verbally committed to me. Good enough for me. I don't get the benefits that come along with a legal marriage. First of all, the benefits aren't what they're cracked up to be. 
when I still cared about complying with the extortion racket, uh, I learned very quickly that you actually can get more of your own money back by not being married than you can if you were. So that whole government bullshit line that, oh, you get the benefits, it's garbage. Absolute garbage. Just another way to convince people that they need these pieces of paper, um, that they need the government's seal of approval. In order to carry out what is essentially a very basic function of life. Finding the person that you wish to spend the rest of your life with and committing to them and creating a contract between the two of you. You don't need the state's permission to do that. Thinking that you do only perpetuates the cycle of state violence. So for, again, for my gay brothers and sisters out there, even for my non-gay brothers and sisters out there, don't play the marriage license game with the state. Don't bother. You want to get married to someone, anyone, anything for that matter, if that's what makes you happy, and you are not in any way initiating aggression against another party by doing so, then go for it. Live your life as you see fit. Don't ask for permission. Don't bother to cheer or jeer the opinions of nine robed twits who are given a job for life based on the recommendation of another member of the ruling class. Just go out there and live. The quicker people can come to these realizations, the sooner the state will cease to exist. And the majority of us can finally understand what true freedom is all about. That's all I got for this week. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions. And like the Seeds of Liberty podcast, Abolitionist Abstractions is covered by the BIPCOT no-gov license. This allows for reuse by anyone other than governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. And check out all the rest of our content on theseedsofliberty.com. See you next time. Peace.